everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Lacey, I'm the owner of Milky Candles and I make videos about life in my 30s. Primarily I've been making more of like small business content though, so if you like that, definitely stick around. This video is all about small business tips and tricks. It's not about formation documents. It's not about like the steps that I took to make sure that my business was like legally formed. If you are interested in that video, I'll go ahead and link it in the top right corner for you right now so you can watch it after you watch this one. Milky Candles is about two years old now. Now that I'm heading into my third year of business, there are a lot of things that I've learned and either I have implemented them and I've seen success or I haven't and I wish that I would have. My first tip is to figure out your branding. And this obviously will change over time, but I think it's really good to think about what kind of colors do you wanna use? What kind of fonts? There can be multiple do you wanna use? And honestly, create a Google Doc and keep track of all of that stuff because when you're in Canva or when you're PixArt or whatever it might be, you wanna make sure that the colors and the texts, AKA the fonts that you're using are gonna be similar throughout because then you're gonna start creating this like consistent branding. This is on your website, this is on your social media, this is on your stickers, this is on your labels, it's on your packaging, it's on everything. Again, it can change as you move and grow as a business, but I think that having that landed not only makes you feel better as um, someone who is putting out content and somebody who is putting out a product, but it all, if you're putting out a product, but it also just makes everything look really cohesive. And that is kind of one of the first things that people look at when they look at a brand, because you want a consumer or an audience member to look at something and think, oh my God, that is so Milky Candles. Like that is such a Milky Candles thing to do. It took me a while to figure out branding and colors and things like that. And honestly, I'm still working on it. And it kind of changes as the seasons go. But if you go to my Instagram, you can kind of see that there's definitely a theme here. I like shadows, I like natural lighting, I like things to be a little bit more neutral tones, so whether that's like grays and taupes and browns and blacks and things like that. My second tip is quality over quantity. This is both in your product that you are producing and in the marketing that you are advertising to people, whether it's for free or whether you're paying for that advertising. I would rather have five really good candle scents like like blow you out of the water than 20 that are just like kind of okay because I didn't take my time in making sure that it was unique or making sure that it had a good throw or anything like that. Go slow and make something that you're really proud of. For me, this also includes like what I post on social media. I don't just want to post anything on social media because I know I'm supposed to post. I want to post things that when I go back and look at it, I think that it is a quality post. I think that it makes my brand look really good and it's not just a kind of a throwaway thing because I knew that I was supposed to be putting something on my page. I would rather have something up there that either looks really good, is engaging, can teach the audience something. I would rather have something like that than just something up there just because. Now that doesn't mean that you can't post frequently, obviously, and I think that you should. It just means that maybe taking some time to sit back and batch your content or take some time and sit back and figure out what the really good things that you want to start your business with. What are the five cents or the six cents that you want to start your business with? Go slow and take your time. We always talk about hustle culture being so go, go, go. And like, do we want to be a part of hustle culture? Do we not want to be a part of hustle culture? Do you not survive if you're not part of hustle culture? But I think that there's so much value in just being able to like take a second and figure out is what you're doing going to help or is it just gonna be something that you're doing because you feel pressured to do it. Tip number three is to look up whatever it is that you are launching or that you are providing for an audience. Has it already been done? And if it has, in what capacity? For example, whenever I'm naming my candles, I look up the names and see if they have been taken. And if they have been taken, next <laughs> if the color has already been done that's a little bit different like color is not as off the table for me as like a name of a candle but it also helps to see how much are people pricing their product in this category and what it makes it different than mine why would i price higher why would i price lower why would i price similarly look up the product because maybe it already exists and if it does you want to know whether it does or doesn't because it 
I don't like using the word competitor, but like technically that is your competitor. So like, what are you gonna do differently? I try to make my scent names really, really unique to make sure that nobody else has them. And I am looking into trademarking. I just have to like figure out a couple more things because trademarking is not as easy as it sounds. But do research with the product that you wanna launch with. Number four, this is really important because this is another like do as I say, not as I do but engage, 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 engage with your audience. Every time I do an engaging post and I ask people like a this or that, do we like this name or do we like that name? Do we like this color? Do we like that color for this type of launch? Um, I always have so much fun and I love doing it. And I, whenever I do it, I'm like, God, I wish I would do it more. And what I should especially start doing is that when it comes to a launch. So I had my Mother's Day launch recently and I didn't do a whole lot of hype. I'm not really good at hyping up launches. I think that you should engage with your audience, period, but especially when you are getting ready to launch a product. It's especially fun when you have a local presence, like you go out, out and do a lot of markets or you have a lot of like connections locally. I think people just feel a lot more connected to you when they see something that like you've chosen. And I think this is probably true even without being local. My dog is rolling around on the couch. So if you hear her snorting like a pig, but it's fun for people to see like whether you pick something that they liked or not, especially when you're still so small and you have that ability to connect with your audience. I think it's really important because it makes you really personable and people really identify with that. Engage with your audience. That includes responding to comments, posting questions that people respond to and then you like post their replies and respond to it. It means taking polls on certain stuff, like just engage, 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 engage. Tip number five is land your brand story. I think this is really hard for people. It was hard for me, but once I actually sat down and started writing about my business, whether it was on my website or whether it was like a little blurb to be put into a local shop that I'm a vendor in, I started understanding what my brand story was. My whole brand is about being able to like take control of your space because like when I was younger, I, there's a whole story about like my family, we got foreclosed on in the house that we were in and so then we were renting and that was like, hard for me because I couldn't control my space and me being able to control my space is very important to how I feel mentally. That is actually the exact moment I got into candle making because I couldn't really do it visually so I had to play on another sense that I had which is my sense of smell. Even if you don't know what your why is or what your story is, if you just sit down and start writing, just write about it something will come to the surface and that is the thing that you will start um, refining as what your story is. It also doesn't have to be some like deep into the weeds story. It could just be something that you're very passionate about and you want to see that thing make other people feel happy or valued or part of a community because that's the other part of my story is like being able to take space as like a woman of color and as a queer business owner in this market, sit down and write about it. Type it up, handwrite it. I can guarantee you that something will pop up. Number six, this might actually be an unpopular opinion, but I would actually refrain from buying in bulk until you land what it is that you are going to launch. What happens is you buy in bulk because it's cheaper in the long run. But if you're not gonna use that thing in the long run, then it's not actually cheaper. You actually just spent a lot of money on something that you're not gonna use and you're probably gonna donate or throw away, depending on what it is. Regardless of what your business is, if you are looking at a specific color or a fabric or a scent or a type of wax or a vessel or a spray or whatever it might be, buy a little bit and consider that your sample. And if it works, amazing. Green light, go for it. If it doesn't, you only spent a little bit out of pocket and now you don't have a whole bunch of supplies that's waiting for you that you're not gonna end up using. Land it first with your sample and then go and be great. Number seven, this is another do as I say, not as I do. I do this all the time and then I have to like snap myself back. <sighs> don't let perfectionism be your worst enemy. Don't let it get in your way of actually doing something. I've seen so many comments of people who say I'm gonna launch this time next year and I'm still figuring out the sense that I wanna do. Baby girl, if you have everything else and you're just trying to figure out that small thing, does it smell good to you? 
Do you like it? The reality is, is you're always gonna change things as you go. That's how the learning starts when you actually dive into it, for the most part, obviously not for everything. You want to have something worth quality, right? You want to put something out there that you are going to be really proud of and people are going to be wowed about. But there have been scents that I have launched that have flopped. There have been times where I have done way too many launches or way too many scents in one launch. That was a big mistake on my end because I had way too much stuff to look out for or to keep track of. You can produce something of extremely high quality without it being perfect to you because that word perfect is very, very, very subjective. It is not objective. Six months into my business, I changed my labels. Six months later, I actually changed the vessel that I was using. I went from black tins to concrete vessels that I hand pour. The real learning really starts once you put yourself out there. So don't let perfectionism get in your way. That is not to be confused with just go and launch whatever you think should would be great. Obviously, test it, try it, get feedback from other people, but just don't let the perfectionism actually stop you from jumping in. Just jump. Tip number eight is track your journey in whatever way makes the most sense to you. I personally use a calendar and I have a Google Drive. This will help you be more streamlined in the years to come. I think I've talked about this before, but it's incredibly helpful for you to have like a planner and you can track how often you've paid yourself, how much you've paid yourself, when did you launch your Father's Day gift boxes, when did you launch for the holiday season, and that way you can start comparing you to yourself. It also helps you remember like when certain licenses are going to expire or like for example my, um, my taxing license that I have here in Arizona. I have it on my calendar January or, or sorry December 31st of this year the next day you better get on aztaxes.gov and renew your license when does my mailbox renew when does my uh, website platform renew like because I use Wix but I, I do want to switch to Shopify eventually so I want to make that switch before I have to pay for it again track your journey it is incredibly helpful for you to look back at and say this month last year this is where we were or six months ago, this is what we were doing. Number nine is to be receptive to feedback, but like only in relation to what your actual goals are. Everyone is gonna have an opinion. It's up to you to decide and filter through what works for you. And it's important to not be like, feel defeated over someone's opinion. Be receptive to feedback, but always compare it to whatever your goal is. So for example, a goal that I always have is to make sure that I have a product of quality. If someone tells me that my product is expensive, I'm gonna take that feedback and I'm gonna sit on it for a second and I'm gonna think about, okay, but why is it expensive? It's expensive because the products, or not the products, I'm sorry, the materials that I buy to make my product are not cheap. Therefore, in order for me to have a profit, in order to keep running my business, my product does have to be on the more expensive end. That's just how it's gonna be. If I make this product cheaper, then I have to find materials that are cheaper. So if my end goal is always quality product, thank you for the feedback. However, it's a necessity. In comparison, I also got feedback that my candles were a little bit wobbly. And this was from, I, I actually was thinking it, and so it's funny that it happened in this moment the way that it did because um, it was when I was stocking them on the shelves of a local a plant shop, Diggit Gardens. And in that moment, I recognized I need to do something. My goal is quality all the time. So this is actually feedback that I'm gonna take and implement into my candle. So I got rubber stops for the bottom so that they wouldn't slide and that they would be stable. It's important to know what your goals are when hearing someone's feedback because you're always gonna hear feedback and you're gonna be tugged in so many different directions. But if that feedback does not align with your goals, it is not to be implemented or it is not to be implemented yet, depending on what it is. Know what your goals are, be receptive to feedback. My last tip, which is tip number 10, is there's always so much to learn as a business owner and it's overwhelming. Like you hear all of these little things and you're like, I can't even keep track of what I'm listening to. I have a running list in my phone, like my notes app in my phone, of all of these things that I hear that I'm like, oh, at some point I need to look into that. I have things like find a CPA, trademark um, certain candle names. Tu I had tube packaging on my list because I wanted to like figure out what tube packaging was for my candles and can I do it and will it fit and where can I get them from? There's so much noise 
all the time, make a list. The reason why I have anxiety when I hear all that kind of stuff is because I feel forced to remember. And if I don't keep chewing on it, then I'm going to forget it. But if I make a list in my phone, I'm not going to forget it. I can turn off that noise, which is ugh, bliss. It also helps you with like sticking with today's goals or this week's goals or like your monthly goals. If that is something that you want to really look into, make it a goal for next month, depending on how time um, pressed it is. For example, I really had to look into my tax situation because I was pressed for time. I had to do that. So there were other goals I had to push aside from my taxes. So that would just be a really small example. But still, keep a running list in your phone of things that you need to research at some point that like you hear it and you're like, oh, is that something I need to be thinking about? And then make it next week's or next month's goal. There's so many tips and tricks out there. These are just 10. If you guys have any, please make sure to put them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like small business content, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notifications so that you will be notified whenever I post a video. I love you even if you don't love me back and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.